Hello, I'm Tan the Tampio TC channel, and I've been gone a while, at least when it comes to people seeing me record something on my PlayStation. It was mostly because I've been on PC. There's been games I've played through there on my YouTube channel, Tambio TC, which is the same spelt as what you're seeing above on the on Geralt there. Uh and I've been playing stuff like Lethal Company, and especially one game that has kind of taken over my life. <laughs> and is making me consider putting it on my top ten, if not ten, five favorite games of all time. It's that good. Uh, and I can't believe I'm saying that. For anything to try and get on there, it's really difficult to. And it found a way. <laughs> But uh, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 3, I wanted to talk about, because I'm almost at the very end of it. I haven't beaten it yet, and I have a couple other playthroughs involving the Dark Urge and just um, seeing how other romances play out. Um, God damn, that game is so good. <laughs> There's great character development. I love the stories to each of the characters. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'm invested in their plot lines. I'm invested in side quests. There's some really interesting side quests. I love the different interactions. There's just so much, not only here, but also just so many new things I keep coming across every time I made I, I, I made another playthrough. I have like a different outcome for something. I haven't played Fortnite in a while by the way, so I might be rusty thanks to Baldur's Gate. Um I might have a bit of a hot take now that I've completed this character's uh main storyline though I'm romancing them so i'll see how things play out there maybe i'll like the character more there but i think uh well, i can see why the character is so popular and so why so many people love this character as well as they won the actor the voice actor award or whatever the frick no <laughs> uh I personally think that I not only like other characters better and their backstories and stuff, I, I'm starting to think to myself, Australian's a little overrated. <laughs> uh, I could see why he's loved, like he's a sensual, sexual vampire. People love vampires, and everyone's just going to be a hot heartthrob for that guy. So, oh my goodness, this stupid headset. Are you serious? Frick you. Um, he's got a really elegant and suave, sexy voice. He's a vampire. Vampires are cool. Well, unless you're ruining them. Um, but I just found his story was the least interesting. It was basically just... Was down to... Uh, Whining, whining, complain. My master treats me as a bit his bitch <laughs> and tortures me. Like I don't know. I just didn't find his like had too much to it. Where you had all these others with really interesting stuff, and I think it's also because I've seen so many vampire stories and stuff at this point that it's like. Nothing really surprises me with a vampire character anymore. Where's this person? Why are they just... Sorry. But, uh, yeah, like... We're coming up here. Okay. 
But, um... Shut up. Yeah, I just found that Astorian was the one I was not as fascinated in the most. Like, even the characters people didn't like as much as some of the others, like Gale. Uh, even though people still do really like them. I found Gale a little bit more interesting. It's like learning that he's got an orb or a part of the weave within his body and it could explode and level a city and that he made love to a goddess <laughs> like there's just more as well as just like his his goals and objectives of why he ended up the way he is now and uh where things can go with for him and that same thing can be said for a lot of the characters. Each of the characters get better. And I actually do like Astorian's the third half of, like, Act 3, I feel like, is close to closer to where I feel his story and such pick up because you find out about a, a ritual that has been contracted on his back and such, as well as other things that go down when you actually make it to that mansion. And it is kind of a... Uh, cool, like a Dracula-esque mansion kind of level that you're going through. But, um, I just found other characters more interesting. I do think he's better than Halson, in my opinion, as well as some of the others that aren't, like, companions that have been with you for, like, ever, for example. Or have been with you for a long enough time. But, um... Yeah, I just I just found myself getting more interested. There's also like Carlac. She has a freaking uh, a heart that will explode when uh, we fetch her iron, so that she can like the whole thing of her not being able to touch anybody. Like I try to imagine something like that, and I can see that that's that would drive somebody absolutely crazy. <laughs> so I can really see like her point her uh, back her background and personality and everything that she feels uh and shadow heart shadow heart scared of wolves that's something that like a personal very human fear kind of like indiana jones with snakes or people with spiders or clowns or something how <laughs> she even has a scene where she says she doesn't like clouds um but yeah like i found i found them endearing as well as like I'm not going to lie, but Carlac and uh, Shadowheart especially, their romance make me uh, anime blush. Ooh. <laughs> they have such like a endearing and adorable moments um, that like I'm just like, oh, that's very sweet. And now I'm blushing. And now you're... Um, I hope nobody sees this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I freaking I freaking love love this game and its characters. And I was invested in Shadow Hearts, like kind of like this cult that she was abducted by that you find out and like spoilers. Uh, <laughs> and uh, where things were going with that. But it's freaking uh it's it's got so many interesting characters interesting stories and i'm not saying that once again a story and of course you're thinking like typically oh of course you're gonna and the popular character i wouldn't have done it i i wouldn't do it otherwise like i i i do think he's a really good character and i'm not doing it to be oh it's different <laughs> that's about it see ya no like i i genuinely felt that on my journey i was like Storian not only doesn't have much to say uh, a lot of the time, or when he does, like, I just don't really remember the dialogue. I don't know. I just found myself more invested. Even Lizel, let's see, let's, let's talk about Lizel a little bit, because Lizel is basically the reason, like, Lizel is first off kind of a forced in your face character. You kind of have to have her with you just because the story is uh, kind of pushing her with you. You can have a lot of uh, your hands, but um, for 
mark you. Uh, but yeah, like, there's, there's a bunch of, a lot of her character does kind of sum up the reason you like characters, because she's mostly an encyclopedia for her people, the Githyanki, and, um, you're invested in that stuff. But where other games kind of fail in having their own walking cyclo encyclopedias or their own walking, um, uh, I gotta take that, their own walking uh, uh, exposition dumps, like this character actually finds a way to make the reason for learning about her history and stuff actually have a purpose because uh, it is the very reason she becomes conflicted in such a unique, different character, depending on your choices, of course. Where she can actually, like, reject certain things or see things differently of her own history. And it plays a big part. So that's kind of cool, and I like that. She has one of the more important uh, stories, and she, I, like, I actually feel like she's the most changed character by the end because she's such a, such a dickhead, and she's so abusive. Um, even when you romance her, and what she talks about with her people is like, god damn. But she's such a nice and really cool individual that uh it's just by uh, like i haven't gotten to the end but from everything i've been seeing she's just really good she's well written and everything well rounded and uh yeah i found myself liking her liking the gals the most in the game will is also really cool I like i like will uh his whole whole leaving Baldur's Gate and his, fa his father or grandfather uh, becoming one of those um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of his, his, little, his little group that he's joined but he makes a deal with a devil and now he's stuck with her and she like later gives him horns depending on like what you do later but she's hunting he's he he's hunting Carlac. you can convince him not to hunt her and him and Carlac are like the two nicest characters in that entire game um i mean shadowheart is too but shadowheart can have a bit of a you know shadowy heart uh, <laughs> uh very itchy no but um it's just i i found all the other characters have really great like backstories and stuff uh and i got to see the outcome of most of the characters except for a couple i will hopefully see that soon uh the the guardian of you is also very interesting like very very interesting um there's like some big plot twists with the with the frickin' with that character. Oh. Anyways, um, I'm hiding this little bush here for a bit. But yeah, I just found some. I love a lot of. I I even got to see a lot of the side characters and their romances and such, like. Minthara, or whatever the frick her name is, the drow, the crazy drow. And I love who can join you at your camp and such. Like, it's pretty cool. The character creation is really good. The Dark Urge stuff is interesting. I'm very interested in the Dark Urge, like, where the frick that stuff is going. Uh, the villains are really good, too. I found the villains really compelling. Uh, there are some dark ass choices too, like freaking dark as hell. It's just like this is unreal for a game almost. And while I've had performance issues and stuff, mostly related to trying to stream that game, uh, my friend Dave will buy it. By the way, try and help me out to get that to work better with Baldur's Gate Three, uh, because I freaking hate OBS, <laughs> and that's what I've been using. I want to use an Elgato. 
Uh, even though it is very similar to an Elgato, it is missing a few things that make an Elgato special to me, though. And that I can understand a little better. <laughs> and also, depending on the version of Elgato, it's not quite as maybe outdated as OBS, I don't know. <laughs> Just OBS has been kind of trash for me. <laughs> but nonetheless... Yeah, I, I did like Astorian's last third of his storyline and such, but um, I just found myself more invested in the other characters and what their outcomes were. So that's about it. See ya. <laughs> yeah, I hope to see more, and... Uh, I will tell you more about like my final conclusions, but like this game is that good. <laughs> uh, I have completed some of the peop the the companions uh, quest lines, but not all of them. I'm at Boulder's Gate, by the way, with my play playthrough. I'm close to uh, the end, very close to the ending. I feel, but I might explore around the city and such first. Even now, I'm thinking I want to. I just want to play Baldur's Gate 3 so I can finish it and see what uh, the side quests on Baldur's Gate itself are like. And I've spent it's almost 60 hours, by the way. I have 60 hours in that one playthrough. That's not even counting the other playthroughs I have going alongside. So yeah, and I think everybody's get. I have to also give Lizelle voice actress credit while she, while she definitely maybe isn't quite a standout like the actor who plays Astorian I have to give her credit because she has to say so many ridiculous words it's kind of like if somebody were to ask to to quote all of the the uh to like speak in elvish Entire sentences in Elvish and Lord of the Rings or something. And they had to do it fluently and just just perfect, just right. That's what it feels like with her character, but with the... Gets, uh... Frickin... Uh... You know, language or whatever the frick. Uh, yeah, like, uh... It's just like, I have, to, I have to give her credit because she's really giving it her, her all... In her performance, as well as she just has to say all these ridiculous freaking words <laughs> along with it. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. There's a dude over there. all i had to talk about with Baldur's gate 3 if you look if you love a story and because i feel like people are going to hate me for that <laughs> i do really like his character i just think that like i was more invested with the other characters backstories and such um but i understand why he's freaking such a loved character because he's a freaking heart throb for people <laughs> it's kind of like uh making Orlando Bloom freaking uh, Legolas in the Lord of the Rings movie is like, the Lord of the Rings movies is like, yeah, <laughs> he's really cool and he's hot. <laughs> Everyone's going to be a heartthrob for him. <laughs> it's kind of the, it's kind of a similar deal. I do think there's uh, some different things going on with the story that may make him more interesting. And I got to see how his, his romance plays out. Maybe he'll change my mind there. Though I am also playing through others' romances, and I'll have to see how they play out as well. But so far, like 
my personal favorite characters are probably Carlac and uh, Shadowheart, like the girls. I love Will and Gale as well. Will and Gale are just really cool. Uh, very nice and very interesting characters. I love their backstories and how everything uh, concludes with them so far as what I've seen. <sighs> but yeah, um, I think Carlac is really the... Carlac and Lysel are really the only ones I haven't gotten to see the full conclusion yet. But other than that, like, uh, I'm more... I'm... Uh, Probably going to have to remake my top 10 list now. I can see why this game was so loved. And why I love Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, I have to say, while uh, Breath of the Wild just scratched that Zelda itch, that Tears of the Kingdom was just a little bit more. I was also exhausted of Zelda's Zelda Breath of the Wild-ish kind of gameplay and all that at the time because like that game took like i 100 percented breath of the wild on both the wii u and the switch because i didn't have a switch at the time i had to play on the wii u uh, and then when i got a switch i played it on the switch um and that is such a good game but i have to say like i was kind of like exhausted of zelda stuff at the time as well as uh I, I quit at the part of, like, once I I knew I had to collect a thousand or whatever Korok seeds they had this time. And after I collected, like, 900 in the previous two games twice now, that I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this again. I'm exhausted, and I haven't touched Zelda since. <laughs> Uh, and Zelda, Zelda games are really good, and they always make me go like, oh, this Zelda game is my favorite. No, this one, because I love Majora's Mask. Wind Waker is really good. Love The Link to the Past. Uh, of course, Ocarina of Time. Even like some of the lesser ones, Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess, like I love and such. And I always kind of go back and forth, like, which one do I love the most? Now the newer Zeldas have had to that, and now I'm looking forward to the Zelda game that's actually got Zelda as a playable character. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I'm looking forward to that stuff. Goddamn, Baldur's Gate 3 is good. If I get a PS, when I get a PS5 or Xbox Series or whatever, I'm probably likely going to get a PS5 because I want to play Demon Souls Remake because Sony are a bunch of dickheads and won't put Bloodborne or frickin' Demon Souls on PC. Come on. Just do it already. Do it. Do it now. Stop. Stop blocking people from wanting to play their favorite game. You dumbass thoughts. <laughs> even even Luke Stevens was coming out and like, hey, there's an audience for Bloodborne. Put it on PC, dickheads. <laughs> and when Luke Stevens is coming out here, it's like, yeah, you better do that soon because everybody's getting up on your ass about it. <laughs> now I'm contributing a little bit, even though I'm a much smaller YouTube channel. People are still going to agree because everybody's like, I want to, uh, please, and we want we want it to be at higher frames and such. Please, please, Bloodborne PC. <laughs> please, 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 Bloodborne for PC. Please, more frames, please. <laughs> Chamberlain. <laughs> I gotta watch that movie again. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, uh... They need to complete that, that series as well, because they only made one season of Dark Crystal, and then it got cancelled. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, but yeah, I ha I uh, this is my thoughts so far on Baldur's Gate 3. I think it is such a freaking amazing accomplishment. Uh, it's not perfect, nothing's perfect, but goddamn, I'm just obsessed with this gameplay. I love the tactical gameplay. It kind of reminds me of Dragon Age. I think it is very similar to like the original Dragon Age and such. And of course, the original Baldur's Gates, and I love and remember a lot of things. I think Bal the original Baldur's Gate, one of, one of them, I remember there was like a talking sword in. 
It's got to be a Baldur's Gate game. That was such um, a memorable, uh, well, memory. But I also remember seeing it, like, talked about everywhere, too. Like, that cool mo little moment. But, yeah, let me know on that, too. Like, if I'm right about that or if that's, like, a different game I'm thinking of. That could be... That could be, um... I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think of it at some point. But yeah, just though if uh, you don't see me here, I'm trying to do a lot of PC stuff. I will still come back to the PlayStation to do stuff. Hence why I am doing this video now. And I will see you next time. If you did enjoy this, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments below. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye!